Welcome back to KXLU 88.9 FM Los Angeles. You're listening to A Fistful of Vinyl. With Alec and John. With Alec and John. My name is Alec, and by process of elimination, he's John. Um, uh, there are more than two people in this room. Yeah. There are, and that's a su- super important part of tonight. Uh, we have a third person who, if you like, you can introduce yourself. Actually, I'm demanding you do. If you don't like it, tough. It's me. Hey. Allison Weiss. That's right. You did it. <laughs> and she's going to hang out with us, and we're going to do like interview and talk about stuff. And we're going to play music. The last song you heard uh, before this stirring rendition of the soundtrack to Red Dead Redemption um, was actually, I don't, I don't know if you caught that. It was Chris Farron covering Making It Up, which oh, is your I song. Got it. Okay, good. I was so excited when I found that. I was Can like, you? oh. I, could, I noticed Chris Farron's voice anywhere. It's so distinct. It's so distinct. It is. I also <laughs> noticed my own lyrics and melody anywhere. <laughs> okay, that <laughs> makes a little bit more sense. I don't know. Well, cool. I'm 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 happy to have you here. Um, and in your own music. Yeah, I'm already stoked that we've been hanging out long enough that I already know like I like you, and this isn't going to be weird. Sometimes it's like sometimes we have to find out the hard way. Yeah, like yeah, I've had guests who like don't like me. And, like I feel pretty good about you. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, I I think I put out at least like a solid eight out of ten vibe. Yeah, yeah, it'd be my for sure. I'd go nine point. Oh. Going up. Oh, wow. Point ten. Nine point ten. Damn. Point one zero. Accuracy is key here. Or Alex go to 11. <laughs> <laughs> point one zero. Yeah. <laughs> Re- repeating, of course. Um, yeah, so here's what you can expect from this show. She's going to play. We're going to interview. We're going to play some music. Um, this next song is a bomb the music industry song that I've been wanting to play for six months because six months ago I found out that my 25th birthday was on a Monday night. Yeah, so yay, we get to celebrate my birthday tonight too. Um, this song is by Bomb the Music Industry. It's called 25 and you're listening to A Fistful of Vinyl on KXLU 88.9 FM Los Angeles. Find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash A Fistful of Vinyl and all your other appropriate social media needs. Let's do this. Welcome back to A Fistful of Vinyl on KXLU 88.9 FM Los Angeles. You're listening to Alec and John, and we're playing music and talking stuff. Um, oh, train of thought. Yeah. Allison Weiss is here. <laughs> hey. What's up? Ha, what, nothing. Just we chilling. Totally, we totally forgot about A few you. feet Sorry. away from you. <laughs> this is great. That's that's like the best place to be. Really great surprise. Um, so we just finished playing some music that we should back announce really quick before we get into other things. The last song you heard was by Charles Tillman. It was called Apple Blues. Before that, you heard Michelin Embers with Tallapache. Uh, before that, Tim Burr with Live on Grow Radio. I don't think that's what the song was called. I think he was on a, on Grow Radio, which is the radio station that Artichokeification has a right, show on. Who is worth talking about for like forty five seconds? I mean, more than that maybe, but uh, yeah, you can afford that much time. Yeah, you no, know, he puts. He basically takes. This is a guy who takes like unheard of folk punk artists. Um, and does the thing that we talked about in the car. He just like rips their music, puts the album cover art up on YouTube, and then puts all of their music up on on YouTube for them. And he's got a channel with just like thousands and thousands of songs that like otherwise wouldn't really be heard on like a broader spectrum. He's so, working super hard. Yeah, he's so. And he had like a big YouTube took a bunch of his stuff down a long time ago, and he's like worked really hard to get some of it back up and yeah, to he, do something new. Yeah, so, so he he survived the uh, you know the copyright bitch slap. Yeah, right. um, before that was Days and Days with Misanthropic Drunken Loner and I particularly like that version because we recorded it here on Sunday mm-hmm. um, you can find it on YouTube along with many other useful things I thanks guess. Days and Days that was fun <laughs> before that was Bomb the Music Industry uh, they recorded a song for my birthday it was called 25 because uh, that's how old I am um, yeah it's you know, all the stuff about New York is purely metaphorical if if you picture me, it's like the, the, your insides are sort of like. If you York. picture me as New York, um, and I guess um, my struggle with facial hair as umbrellas, the song makes perfect sense. Uh, and then we started off with uh, we actually started off with Chris Farron covering the Allison Weiss song "Making It Up," which is totally convenient because Allison Weiss, as you mentioned before, is sitting a few feet away from me. Hi, here I am. Yay! Um, Still here. So, I want to talk about some things with you. Um, I, I, I looked up, I sleuthed a bit, I stalked a little bit, and learned a bunch about your life and what, like, kind of why you write music, and I want to hear some of that stuff said by you. Um, so, the first thing that really caught me... God, this thing just won't stay up. I think it's the, f- I think it's the joint at, right at the <laughs> edge of the, <laughs> of the mic clip. Oh, I see. I think I it's the one where your pinky is right now. I can't even tighten that I one. I think up. it's the pinky joint, the one near... There's there's not even a head on that thing. No, I can't, no. Wait, like 
here? No, more down. Yeah, down. Four inches down. This. There you go. I think it's that one, right? It's, I think it, it's, it's up here. It's up here. Okay, it's, I was wrong. Uh, that's okay. That's all right. Well, well, maybe the next question will go better. Sorry, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so all right, one of the things that I initially found really compelling about your music is kind of the way that you deal with emotion. Um, in it and you said uh and i wrote down a quote i'm not sure if i paraphrased it or not when i started playing i was inspired by the need to get a feeling out into the world um and you kind of said that in reply to like not really not so much being inspired by other artists to like create a sound but create something that it sounds like you felt was meaningful and sort of unrepresented is that would you say that's accurate yeah absolutely especially when i first started playing i mean i was listening to a lot of like um like T- like terrible pop punk bands and like you know emo I was like really in a dashboard confessional and stuff like that but for the most part I mean I wasn't like trying to sound like any of the bands I was listening to I was just writing songs as I was writing them and I was like more obsessed with like the words I was singing if that makes sense I think it does I mean, yeah did it make sense to you John yeah totally good cool, good 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 Glad uh, we're all on the same page. We're all reasonably intelligent adults who can understand sentences when they're put together. So were you somebody who like used writing as a tool to get things out of you before you started songwriting, or did they sort of happen at the same time? Um, I wrote, you know, I, I had like a live journal that I like wrote in all the time, super and I was cool, like yeah. super emo in my live journal <laughs> before I ever even wrote a song. Um, get those HTML broken hearts in there. Like. Yeah, like literally don't even get me started on <laughs> HTML broken hearts. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I was never like a writer. I wrote a lot of like silly, stupid rhyming poetry when I was a kid that wasn't about anything. Sure. Other than, uh, like I had like a poem about a three-legged dog or like finding a rat in your KFC. Just like <laughs> silly, like middle school stuff. That is a really emotional experience. Yeah. That yeah. Can, let me tell you. Yeah, I, w- I was not writing in the first person perspective. I was, you know, storytelling about an urban legend I'd heard or a rat <laughs> in the KFC. Um, no, but so when I like got into high school and started having like real emotional feelings or you know quote real yeah. emotional feelings I was like well I've, I know how to write things that rhyme and I've just started learning to play guitar so maybe I'll write songs and then it just sort of went from there just happened yeah yeah right um so okay I guess I I compare this a lot one of my favorite songwriters of all time is a gentleman named Josh Ritter um, oh yeah Josh Ritter is like amazing He's like, crazy. You're, I I love you right now. Like everyone's like, really? Who's that? I feel like, all right, I'll send you his stuff. There's uh, an album called uh, The Historical Conquest of Josh Ritter, yes. which is one of my favorite records yeah. of all time. Yes, I wish I'd worn that T-shirt. Damn it! <laughs> oh, I would like you much better. Oh my god, do you, do you just have to believe I have it, or I'll like I'll <laughs> I believe you. I like I'll take a picture of myself in it and send it to you, and you'd be like, yes, okay, you pass the. I, yeah. Maybe I can bump up from the nine point ten to something higher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, maybe we'll give you a full uh, ten. Well, I've always I I've, I've always described Josh Ritter as somebody who like elucidates emotions that like pe- everybody has, like universal emotions that that people don't really know they have or aren't really able to like identify enough to put into words. Um and I, god, I know I started off with a question in here. Um <laughs> <laughs> I did. I promise. So excited. Um, yeah. No, you blindsided me by like knowing what I was talking about. It was completely what alien. A um, I no. I mean, I guess my question was kind of something about like what, like what, what role in writing music do you think you know, like expressing, expressing, especially like unfamiliar or or previously unexpressed emotion has. Like, do you think that's, do you think that's more of like a th- catharsis for the writer, or do you think that's more of like, um, you know, like a safe space for the listener to find? Um, I feel like it depends on the songwriter. I feel like there are people who write for just themselves and there are people who write for other people as well. Um, I feel like when I first started writing, it was more all about me. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt I, I feel like I was very specific and I, I was just like, something is happening to me and I need to say what I want to say about it right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but as of late, like as I grow up and like learn more about life or whatever and songwriting and, you know, it's it's a, become a not a hobby anymore it's a career i definitely like think about um how i can sort of say things in a new way and and create something for a listener to really relate to because i feel like there's a lot of stuff that i experience where i'm like oh man like i feel like i need to tell people about what i just figured out Mm -hmm. maybe i can do that through a song or something you know especially because you can only write so many like you hurt me and i'm sad songs before it's like 
okay, get over it already. <laughs> um, so now I feel like I'm really interested in trying to like pick apart like the uh, subtleties of a relationship and write about things that maybe haven't been written about yet. I think we might touch on that later during our musical performance. What do oh, you think? Oh, well, maybe. <laughs> we perhaps, yeah, perhaps, yeah, perhaps. Perhaps. Yes. Um, okay, so before we go into musical performance, um, and this wait, is something I actually, wait. what? I just, I mean, I, what? I have two things I yeah, want to ask. Yeah, what were you, oh, why don't you let your co-host <laughs> throw a question in here, too? <laughs> what the hell do you want, so John? Excited. You just can't stop. <laughs> what do you, what do you, what do you want? Well, Spit was, it out. It's you, you probably had an AIM, right, if you were the live journal. Oh, yeah. What was your, did you have any really awful AIM screen names? Oh, man, that's uh, such a good bad AIM I'm sorry I doubted things. you. I'm so sorry I doubted you. That's <laughs> you an awesome this. question. I know the answer to this question. My first was Evil Fish 101. That's a pretty Evil good Fish. Uh, and then I graduated to Orange Kitty 101. Orange Kitty. <laughs> and then uh, when I was in middle school, my best friend and I both decided to make the, our screen names Kookaburra Girl 42. Uh, <laughs> but one of ours with, was with two R's and one was with one R. Nice. And all of our friends hated us because <laughs> they never knew who they were speaking to. Um, I think after that, I moved on to having my own name. But yeah, Kookaburra Girl 42. Nice. Uh, and it was bad, either me or more bad Richie. like profile things or like away messages i feel like i had I mean, some really oh, awful man. my away message school. were were always like perfectly crafted selections of lyrics directed towards totally, one right? person <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah good do you have you ever seen the twitter uh at your away message no that it's, sounds awesome it's amazing it's a person <laughs> just tweeting as if they're um, like a 13 year old girl from the early 2000s on AIM. AIM. That sounds AIM. awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna look that up. Um, what, what was your screen name? My screen name. All of my gr- my group of seventh grade friends, and like uh, kind of onward from there, they were the people who I I guess started using AIM with originally, and we all had gerbil themed screen names. <laughs> gerbil themed. And mine was Gerbil's Win. <laughs> I guess somebody's that's, was I guess that's in line with lose. the <laughs> Yeah, there was it was a bunch of really mediocre jokes about gerbils. One of my friends had like the Latin name for gerbil. There was something about Gerbilis. my like seventh grade group of friends that was very obsessed with the animal. We actually have a holiday that we still celebrate as a group called Gerbil Day. But now we've grown up and now we get drunk, but we used to like watch Hamtaro. When um, is Gerbil Day? It's in February. Do you know which day? Yeah, it wouldn't I, be February second, uh, would it be? No, it's it's Groundhog Day. Oh, <laughs> it's like no. February first, just edges him out a little bit. <laughs> oh no, it's that's why it's August second. It's coming up, I guess, because oh. it's six months after Groundhog Day. Okay, really? Yeah. Did you guys pick it on purpose? Yeah. <laughs> what, Got it. <laughs> tell me about Triple Day. What does that consist of? Well, now we get drunk, but like I said, we used to watch what, Hamtaro. What did you do when you were... Okay. We watched that show, Hamtaro, that's about kind of dribbles. That's about a dribble, at, right? at what age so did it go years. from Hamtaro to drunk? Um, In case your parents seven, aren't listening. Or so, probably. Okay. Yeah. That's a taste. Yeah. It's a good age. <laughs> that was only a slightly dodgy answer. <laughs> okay. So, probably. Well... <laughs> Is it okay with you if I ask my question now? Sure. It's yeah, pertinent to our free. show, I promise. Yeah. It's it's potentially she's going to give us advice that will help us. Okay. Okay, you ready for Do this? Your best. Okay, I am going to try really hard. Um okay, so you're big into like DIY and 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 self-promotion and like handling a lot of these things yourself. Um tell me about like how you got good at that and how we can also be good at that because we're not. How did I get good at it? I think I got good at it out of necessity. Uh, it started in high school when I would um, use the copy machine to make as many copies of my show posters as I wanted to, and I would put them all over the halls uh, to the point where it bothered people. Solid, um, solid. And then in college, I printed up stickers with my name on them, and I put them all over campus. Uh, when people would meet me, they'd be like, oh, you're the girl on the stickers. Um, and I just figured if people know my name, then they're more likely to uh, think that they know my music when they see my show poster. You know, they'll be like, oh, I've heard that name before. I must know what she sounds like. I must know. I must be interested in that or something. (laughs) You know what I mean? You know, like the more you hear someone's name, the more likely you are to to pay attention. Um, So that was sort of my whole thing. But yeah, I mean, there's nobody doing it for me. I was literally a a college kid. um, And so I just promoted myself. And it was sort of like the beginning of Tumblr and the beginning of Twitter Mm -hmm. and the beginning of like Facebook for bands. Um, and I just always used that stuff. And it wasn't really until the last um, couple years that I got, like, a proper manager and an mm-hmm. agent and, like, a label and stuff like that. Before then, it was all me. 
We need stickers, John. That's what yeah, I'm taking from this stickers. conversation. Get some stickers. Yeah. We had this. We had you this. Gotta have, you got to go to a. You know, what you got to do as a radio station. You got to go to shows of bands you like, and you got to be like, "Can we put a table out, and we'll we'll have stickers on it?" And they'll be like, "Of course you can, because we love college radio. We're going to support you." Um, and like you could be like, "Hey, Alison Weiss, I know that you have a CD release uh, next Friday at El Cid in Silver Lake. I do know what that. If we gave you some stickers for our show and you put them at your merch table, and I would be like, heck yeah, I'll put them at my merch table. Oh, and then so all my fans would be, be like, what's we're blowing this? it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking it. This is information I could have used so long ago. Right? Now you only have a week to make stickers? What are you going to do? <laughs> well, oh, wait, actually, I ha- we talked about this. I had what I thought was a pretty good idea about sticker, about a, a fistful of vinyl sticker. I think you kind of liked it. I didn't remember what it was. Okay. Do you, okay. It was, uh, it was like a picture, like a white sticker, like plain text, um, a fistful of vinyl, long blank, period. And the idea is that like anybody could sharpie or if, if this, yeah, a fistful of vinyl something period. And the idea was that we had so many different phrases that we wanted to say about a fistful of vinyl, like a fistful of vinyl. Uh, what do you want to say? Like a fistful of vinyl changed my life. Changed my life. Yeah. I wanted to say like a fistful of vinyl is not to be trusted. And we decided we can kind of like meme it. Like anybody could put a phrase in there. Is that too high engagement? Do you think people won't go for that? I think you need an action word in there, or else people are going to just see the blank and be like, I don't get it. A you fistful of vinyl changed f- my... Or a fistful of vinyl is okay. blank. Okay. Or I blank about... I don't know. Okay. All right. I make it, we I blank should make a really long vinyl. Mad Lib. <laughs> about yeah, a fistful of vinyl. Yeah, make a super long Mad Lib. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> That's actually a great idea. A Mad Lib sticker? Man. Okay. It's a big okay. sticker. Very, yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. We're gonna. We're, this, this is in, this is in beta. We'll think take it. Yeah, we'll think take tips. it off air. Those are my tips. Okay. Okay. Much appreciated. I'm gonna you write that. Have to do it. I'm gonna write that down. Pretty much. Okay. Uh, well, how do you feel about playing some music now? I feel pretty good. Okay. Um, let's get you set up with some microphones. I'm gonna put on some intro music. Oh no! I have the pinwheel of death. That's not what I need to see right now. Um, I'm gonna. Okay. How about this? How about we're gonna play this like a staring contest song, and then we're gonna go back. I to love you. this song. This is one of my favorite songs ever. If, yeah, I know if the computer's going to work. Nope, it's frozen. Okay. So you're um, not play it. Well, I can't. Wow. <laughs> um, welcome to College Radio, folks. What a tease. Are we still in the air? I, as far as, yeah, we're still in the air. Should I push the cough button? <laughs> Are you coughing? For the listeners, this is a button that I push when I cough. I don't know if it works. How Ready? You... <laughs> Just, Did it work? Uh, God, this is the worst. I'll never know. Um. <laughs> Right, John, are you playing music? I gotta find something, I guess. I don't really have anything pulled up. You know what? Let's just put yeah, the mic right over. Now. Put Hold the on. put the yeah, mic over by her. We got this. We got this. Put yeah, the mic over by yeah, her. Pick something. What are we doing? Put the mic over by her. Do it. No, this mic. This this microphone. <sighs> you guys aren't supposed to see me like this. This is me not at my best. But it is clearly time for a live performance. That's fine. You just heard you. That was a little behind the stage, behind the scene look. Oh, we're gonna skip the a, inner music. Yeah, we're, we have to. <laughs> Um, so let's just point that one at your sound hole uh, on your guitar and then point the other one at the sound hole on your face. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which one's my face hole? Is, is this the one for my face? I don't know. I'm panicking. <laughs> okay. Um, what are we playing? Am I playing a new or an old or what? Um, let's... I'll go new. Okay. All right. Let's is that see. good? Does that make it easy for you? That... We're managing. We're putting it all we together. Got this. It's coming together well. Okay, what are we going to hear? I'm going to play you a new song. It's called Remember When. It's the title track off of my EP that's out next Tuesday. Not tomorrow, but the following. Am I good to go? There's like eight cameras on me right now. Cool. Cool. Woo, cool. That was really fun. I liked that a lot. Thank you. And the good news is the computer's dead. No! But it, I'm going to bring it back to life. Uh, oh, okay, cool. Five to Necromancy. That's great. Um, can, I, can I request a song? Yeah. Uh, I hope I know it. Oh, it's, it's, it's by you. I hope I know it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just still going to say it. Uh, can, I, can I hear uh, uh, Take You Back? Uh, 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 oh, yeah. Yes. I was okay. like, which, wait, which, it's a new one. That's why yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. I don't know that song. It's like, oh, it's the one that like, everyone Is that really me. old? <laughs> no, it's actually really new. Yeah, that's the one that um, it was like premiered the other day or something. It was, it was. I listened to it like all day that day. I couldn't yeah. take it. And I like showed it to Ellen. I showed it to John, and they're both like, "It's a good song." And I was like, "It's a great song." Yeah. Oh yeah. Is that what you were like? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're like, what now? <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't have a microphone for that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, yeah, okay, cool. John said naughty Let's things. Let's do this. This, is the, I'm gonna, this song goes out to the computer, which hopefully will be back may, soon. May he rest in peace. That is a great song. That is Thank a great you. song. Thank but, you. Ah, okay. We're going to play I, The Computer's Back to Life. You resurrected yeah, it with your awesome music. I resurrected it. <laughs> you cast that spell. <laughs> um, coming up, this is Like a Staring Contest uh, by Future Kings of Nowhere. And then after that, we're going to have more Alison Weiss. Yay! You're listening to A Fistful of Vinyl. Welcome back to A Fistful of Vinyl on KXLU 88.9 FM Los Angeles. I am your host, Alec. I'm here with John. And our guest tonight is Allison Weiss. I'm still here. You may have heard her. You may remember her from that musical performance that happened five minutes ago. Uh, but if not, here's a musical performance by Allison Weiss. What are you going to play first? I'm going to play you a cover. Of what? Uh, one of my favorite songs ever, uh, Call Your Girlfriend by Swedish pop sensation Robin. Ooh. Um, I covered this song for that EP that I've been playing songs from. So this is on that. Let's hear it. This is even, it's stripped down on the EP, but I'm going to strip it even further. This is fully, fully stripped. 100% stripped down. 100% stripped. Silence. Thanks for, yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Gotta go. Okay. Hold, hold this so I can clap. There it is. There it is. Yay. Somebody's chopping onions in here. That was cool. That was, so that was my first introduction to that song. I'd never heard it before. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's like um, a big yeah. dance song. He's lying. No, I mean, I don't, not at least, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think I've ever heard it before. You've heard it? Yeah. you never heard it? I don't think so. It's like a huge dance, it's like a... Sure. I remain I can imagine. I mean, either way, that was, you know, You would, like, cool. dance to it in the club. Sure, yeah. Not that version. I could Unless get down to that version. Club. Yeah. I would go to that club. I like sad club. I feel I like sometimes the, I, I really need a sad club, <laughs> you know? I love sad club. Yeah. Hey, guys, can we get together and just, like, <laughs> be sad for a little while? sad club. I would join the SAG Club. Yeah. Let's start one. Done. Here, right yeah. now. Welcome oh. to the SAG Club. <laughs> Welcome to the- <laughs> Everything sucks. See, that's a good... Uh, at, at SAG Club on Twitter. I wonder if anyone's taking that. <laughs> You're, like, jumping on the computer right now. I mean, you gotta get, you gotta be fast with this stuff. I mean, Dog Boner, Dog Boner had the first movie. Somebody's there, so already gotta- getting it right now. Your fingers are not moving uh. fast enough. <laughs> Oh, well, so while I'm doing this, we should play another song. What, what are you, you going to play next? What are you gonna I play? can't decide if I should go old, like like my m- most recent full-length album, if I should go something like earlier than that. I think I just figured out what I'm going to play. Okay. okay. Cool. cool. Yeah. Something earlier than that. All right. What do we got? This is a song called You Plus Me Plus Alcohol. <laughs> it equals. This is dedicated to you and your 25th birthday. Oh. Congratulations. I made it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. I, I like this. Thanks. My birthday's happier Thank now. Thank you. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thanks. I now really want some wine, I think. That's what I got out of that. <laughs> there you go. Um, so we should, should, let's, let's just go right, right into more interviewing, yeah? John, grab yourself a microphone. Uh, and in my uh, face hole mic. <laughs> <laughs> your face, point sharing, at the, now we're sharing face holes. <laughs> Oh no! It's gonna, be, in the sad club. it's gonna be that kind of interview. Come on by. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. Where is it? Well, so one of the things I wanted to ask you about. Ask away. Kind of back on this topic of writing process. You have that the record is it called Teenage Years or something? The one mm-hmm. where you wrote a song every month. Um, I didn't write a song every you, month. So you recorded. I recorded month. a song every month. Um, all the songs on the Teenage Years are songs that I wrote while I was a teenager okay. that had never like gotten like proper production right so i chose my favorite ones and made made one every month cool so how is how is that like we i feel like sometimes we talk about performing on a schedule like creating on a schedule i know that you weren't writing the songs every month but as far as like i mean that's certainly something we can tell with getting yourself to sit down and like you know do the thing how is that process i mean it was sort of tough because i had so many other things going on i had to like make sure that i took the time every month to like produce it out and find people to help record it and musicians to play on it and um yeah i don't know it was intense i don't know if i would do it again doing a song every month is a lot i feel like it's so much uh easier to just block off two weeks and record everything just do them all you know nice i want to ask about lou reed yeah ask about him what's up with lou reed well not much anymore unfortunately oh no (laughs) r.i.p 
Yeah. yeah. Well, you worked with him. Tell me about tell me about the capacity in which you worked with him and kind of the role he played in your life. Um, well, uh, in 2012, I went on tour with him in Europe, and it was amazing. I um, sort of, I guess I like met him a couple months before he started playing um, some of my songs on his own personal radio show. A friend of mine um, was his manager's assistant, I think, and her, one of her jobs was to give him a big pile of music every week to listen to, and from that he would pick the things he wanted to play on the radio. So she gave him some of my new songs, and then out of nowhere he was playing like these old beat like crazy B sides that he the only way he could have gotten them is like from Bandcamp or like mm-hmm. LimeWire. Does that even <laughs> exist any, or like Kazaa? Yeah, Kazaa right. Morpheus. Just imagine like Lou Reed on Mor- Morpheus or whatever. <laughs> um, so he was playing like these random weird B sides, and then he came to see me play in Brooklyn, and so cool. then invited me to go on tour with him in Europe. And then um, like a week before the tour, uh, they called and they were like, "We wanted to come to the rehearsal space and sing on this one song." And so I did it, and it was super nerve-wracking, but I guess I did a good job because that night they were like, cool, here are eight more songs to learn by the time we go on tour. And so I, I opened for him, and I also sang in his backing band, which was cool. That's Dude. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, that's like you'll, you'll never have to worry about like not being cool again. Thank you. You can just like pull yeah, that card. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is you can't just tell people. I mean, you, you should can't make be at a, a party and be like, you know. but you you have you have like <laughs> you have like the one up ace in the hole. Like if you're at a party and somebody's like, yeah, so and then once I return from Mars, having made peace with the alien species and da da da, like yeah, I mean that's that's cool. You were probably doing that while I was touring with Lou Reed, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone else is like, oh, t- go to hell, Mars guy. Like, what's yeah. up with this? <laughs> Mars guy sucks. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I could probably kill at a game of two truths and a lie. Yeah, sure. Oh, Maybe man. with people who That's don't know that I'm mean anything about me. Oh man, you know we should play that game on here one time. We can now because I know what you'd lie about. I think. <laughs> yeah, at least that I don't one. have any other lies. <laughs> no, that's that was <laughs> the last. I don't have any other truths. <laughs> is the thing. <laughs> I think I'd be so bad at that game. I think of like, well, these two things are true. Now let me make up a lie. Hold tight. Like. <sighs> yeah, I always end up <laughs> accidentally telling my lie third. That's how I play that game. <laughs> Well, I want to ask, um, and this will probably be our last question of the night, um, I want to ask uh, kind of about about coming out as gay and going from like having gay role models to becoming a gay role model. Can you tell me about that? Um, well, uh, it was sort of back in 2010 when um, the It Gets Better project was first launched and there were a lot of um, like un- really very unfortunate teen suicides in the news that were all surrounding uh bullying that I was sort of like why am I quote in the closet because I just I I had been out to my friends and family for about a year but I decided for some reason that I wasn't going to tell my fans I don't know I just didn't want it to like be be like um what is it I didn't want to be like more important than the music but then I, I I don't know I just sort of realized that that was dumb at least for me I mean I completely respect people who don't want to come out but I was I'm so um, upfront with fans and I'm so like all about like Twitter and like sharing photos on Instagram and like my life is your life let's share all this that it felt weird to be like hiding this one part Mm -hmm. especially knowing that I had so many fans who were young who um, you know I feel like needed another person on their team yeah, like at totally. bat for them in the public eye so yeah. i just wanted to show that i wasn't afraid and nobody else should be afraid and tell people feel free to come up and talk to me at shows or whatever because we're all cool you know yeah, what i mean yeah. and sometimes it takes a couple of people yeah to figure it out you know? yeah and i know that i in particular um had some friends growing up who really influenced me like my friend uh, i don't know if you guys know jenny owen youngs oh yeah yeah, totally. yeah she recently came out as well mm-hmm. but um I mean, I knew I knew her for a while before that, but she she recently like posted her like coming out blog, and it was yeah. beautiful, gave me a cry eye, wonderful. Mm. But I loved that because you know Jenny was um, such a good friend. I mean, she still is, but she was a role model to me like musically, and also like mm. my cool like big gay sister like yeah. being like, hey kid, let me t- tell you about the world or whatever. <laughs> um, so like she in particular and then like I've always been a really big Tegan and Sarah fan Mm -hmm. and and when I was younger I really looked up to them and so I was just sort of like man like I I had those people I feel like maybe there are some people who need me I I, I like that and I think I think it's probably like the best way to look at it is like you never know who you're gonna inspire yeah 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 
I mean, that's something that when we talked to Laura about that too, Laura mm-hmm. Jane Grace. She said that specifically there was one person who was coming to the shows for such a long time and she saw the transition of them like making the like sexual transition right and from the beginning to the end basically mm-hmm. um, and then was approached after a long time and you know sort of was told the same thing like you were the reason that i am who i am now like it's cool like you said to even have that opportunity yeah yeah um well this has been awesome out of respect for our next dj we should probably skedaddle um, let's get out of here. Let's run. Yeah. Uh, do you want to do you want to give us a quick station ID? Or yeah. Let's ID? do a station ID. Cool. Um, uh, How do I? What do I say? Uh, you see, you say who you are, uh, okay. and you say that you're on a fistful of vinyl on KXLU eighty eight point nine FM, Los Angeles. It's on that sticker right there. If you get lost, um, it, it, you know that you just pointed to a door. Okay. I, I, a okay. I, you're I, like I, it's on that sticker. Okay. And I'm I, I pointed. At hundreds of. Stickers. I pointed at the right sticker. You just weren't looking oh, close enough. Oh, I see it. I see it. I see it. I see so, it. Oh, it's where I pointed, isn't it? Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it was a wide gesture that you gave <laughs> towards this direction. Um, all right. Cool. So I just do it whenever. Yeah, let's do it. Is this weird? Are this we making like, it weird? No, it's not weird at all. It's just it's been a minute since I've done a station ID. <clears throat> Me, 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 me. You know what I mean? Well, we can do an Allison ID after no, this if you want to be balanced. <laughs> so good. Um, hey, this is Allison Weiss. I'm on a fistful of vinyl, and you're listening to KXLU 88.9 FM Los Angeles. Yay! She that, was probably, f- that was probably the best one. You have no idea how many oh, people messed so it up good. on the first I'm time. I'm a professional. Nice. I was in college radio, so. Yeah, oh, so. Nice. I hope you got that high five on air. Oh, it was crisp. <laughs> okay, everyone, uh, this has been A Fistful of so Vinyl. Cringy. Find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash A Fistful of Vinyl. Uh, I'm going to be editing and posting this, I think, by Friday, I think is what I told your people. Um, yeah, my people. <laughs> so they I'm don't gonna, care. I'm going to get on that. Whenever you, you don't feel pressure from them at all. Uh, I, I put plenty of pressure on myself. We're okay. Good, good. Uh, but, yeah, find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, find us on Instagram, and uh, there's going to be a blog after this. And uh, uh, That's enough. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone.